Hey everyone, just want to say thanks for watching the video. Um, I didn't film an intro or a, I guess, an ending of the video, so I'm doing it now. Uh, this is two days after the hike, um, but basically just want to say thanks for watching the video. Um, just playing with the idea, just trying to document some of the cool spots that I hike, some of the favorites, uh, favorite things I find, um, and then just some of the details. So for someone new, trying to learn more about some of these places, they can find that information. So. Um, you'll see it. The content's a little bit all over. Um, got a little details, a little highlights, a little, uh, even some deep thinking there for a little bit. So I don't know if that'll be on every video, but, um, just want to kind of give back if I can, things I learned, stuff of that nature. Um, just some quick, quick facts. Uh, just want to say that that hike is a 10 mile loop. So 10 miles long. It's rated as hard in all trails. I'll link it below in the description along with the details um, of the trails that I took. Um, but it's 2,700 feet of elevation gain. Um, you will see at the end of that video, that kicked my butt. I was so sore, um, I was exhausted. I think I hiked for six and a half hours. Um, it was a lot for me for the elevation gain, but uh, got through it, um, did all right. Got out of there exactly at seven o'clock. I think I started around 11.30. So that's pretty long. Um, did not bring enough water. Had to get water from a waterfall. Thankfully did not get sick. Um, so I would warn everyone, bring a lot of water. I had two big tall bottles of water and still wasn't enough. Um, killed the third bottle as well uh, from the waterfall and then chugged water when I got back. So definitely bring plenty of water, bring plenty of food, um, stuff for that nature. But just real quick, the hike. So basically when you park in the parking lot, you're gonna go across the street to start the trail. Um, you're gonna take Ravencliff Falls Trail, which is trail number 11. You're gonna take that to Gum Gap Foothills Trail, which is number 13. Then to 14 Natureland Trust Trail. Uh, that's gonna be a long part of your hike. And then 15 is Frank Coggins Trail. Um, this is when you're crossing back over the highway and kind of doing that back last little loop. Um, and then you go to seven Cold Spring Connector Trail. That is a little tricky, so make sure you keep your eyes open. I think there's a sign for an office, um, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, it was swampy in that area, so I didn't think it was a trail, but it was. Um, and then number three is Cold Spring Branch Trail, which takes you back to the parking lot. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, please like, subscribe, share, um, provide any comments or feedback, places you wanna see, suggestions, things you like, things you didn't like. Um, just working on it, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully this will, uh, take off or do well, but we're just gonna um, keep playing with it and get some more resources, some drones hopefully, at least one drone and got a GoPro the other day. So got some different things, we'll see how it works out. So thanks again. This is the trail entrance. We're gonna do the Natura Land Trail, so we gotta walk down here a little bit and it'll join and connect to it. But Natura Land Loop Trail. So let's start the journey. Yeah, so we're here now on Natureland Trail. Um, originally I said it was a loop. It's, it's a loop combined with other trails. So basically uh, Natureland Trail is where all the magic happens, where all the exciting parts come into play. And it's kind of tough to see, but there is some rushing water just below me here, uh, which is the exciting part of this trail. And uh, currently probably about four miles in to a 10 mile hike. Um, you know, you start to see it, the crowds dissipate more and more as you get out here in Nicholin Trail, which is interesting because this is where all the action and the amazing parts are, but um, yeah, it's, I'm excited. I've been here once before and um, it's a hard hike. It's 10 miles, hard hike. Uh, there's some off camber, there's a lot of roots, a lot of rocks. South Carolina is known for very rocky trails. Um, stuff on the knees if you're not careful, but um, South Carolina is also known for some of the most amazing spots that I've ever been to. So we will uh, continue on our journey here and uh, I'll pick you up as we get to something closer. Talk about the complexity of the trail. One of the things you'll see here is just running water coming down through the rocks. That's the trail. So 
you know, it's not overly complicated, but you know, slippery. Um, obviously, very wet rock has some moss, has some leaves, um, which leads to slipperiness. So, one of the things you'll come across here um, to make sure you have really good footing, good shoes, good hiking shoes. Um, they'll really help you enjoy the trail a lot more and not worry so much about slipping and falling and injuries. They get to the waterfall view, climbing up that. This one waterfall has got to climb now to a lot. Not the easiest thing, not the most complicated, but a little chest. Literally hanging over top of the water right now. It's pretty wild. This is one of the epic things about the Winnipeg State Park, right? Just the awesome waterfalls, running water, just rushing. We just recently had a lot of rain. So I think the water is coming a little more intense this time than normal, but beautiful weather. Oh, yeah. Alright, so I think this is one of the bridges. So we're on trail 14, 46.6 miles to uh, US 273, US 276. Um, this is all trails will work but um, this is a point of no return where it really gets dangerous and uh, also gets a lot longer and strenuous you know just basically this is a spot where they warn you of this is where things get real so it's exciting it's fine but please choose wisely That's pretty steep of rocks, big rocks. Um, climbing down these, either going up or down, depending on which way you do the loop, but it's, uh, this is what exhausts you, honestly. It's a, uh, it's a slow descent of just constant control of your muscles. Your muscles are twitching basically to hold you and stabilize you and control your movement. So you hopefully don't fall, it's very slippery. Uh, but this is what exhausts you. This is what beats the heck out of you before you start climbing uphill. And last time I did this hike, my quads were shaking and I just went downhill. And I still had to climb up, back up. So that's part of the challenge of this hike. Uh, just stabilizing muscles, quad strength. Um, just really got to pace yourself, take your time. It's very slippery. And... Uh, 
yeah filming it on a phone so i got a gopro ordered so hopefully i can show a little bit more action uh in the future kind of show you more perspective but uh yeah it's pretty wild we'll see so i was warned coming up to a waterfall off a cliff here that it's all washed out we've like i mentioned earlier we have a ton of rain the last three four days it's been crushing us downpours major thunderstorms tornadoes you name it and uh doesn't number of these trails it uh not a lot of trees down thankfully yet um it does wash out things it uh can definitely cause some destruction um which from a hiking perspective can make things a little more challenging um so we'll see how this looks might film through it might cut it off we'll see but this is one of the cool spots I remember where I am. I'm going this reverse from the last time I came. But you get huge cliff fronts here. Huge, huge, huge cliff fronts. And uh, you get waterfalls running down when it rains, which is what we're seeing here. I think causing a lot of this runoff we're talking about. So let's take a look. Let's get closer to see how bad it is. Awesome. The water running right down the cliff side here. And there's our down trees. Ripped out. A lot of it's destroyed. A lot of the trail is destroyed. Huh. Used to be all nice and clean coming through here. A lot of trees down. Yeah, we're gonna cross that next, all right. So what we just saw there was huge cliff with the waterfall and uh, we've had nasty storms the last four or five days and uh, looked like a tree came up from the top, at least one, maybe two, and just smashed below. And uh, that's about, I don't know, 100 feet, maybe higher, uh, but it just shredded a tree the base of that trail and water's pouring off it from all the rain which is pretty cool got soaked but felt great i'm sweating my butt off right now but uh yeah always an adventure out here So, you just got a bite to eat, and uh, I've been thinking about some things I learned recently, heard from the video, I'd say seminar yesterday, and one of the things I talked about was the way that you think has such an impact on your life, right? So, when I was successful, successfully trying to start a company and connect with all these companies, one thing I always did was I dreamed. I always thought big. I always thought ahead. 
And over the years, through some trial and stipulation and troubles, just struggles in life, I started looking at the past and all the things that didn't go well and all the things that failed. And I realized I carried that through life, right? Like that carries through anxiety and depression and physical ailments. And the way we think to ourselves, the way we talk to ourselves is very strong, very powerful. Our brain takes all that as truth, no matter whether it is or not. And uh, something I'm trying to do is get back to that kind of thought, right? Dreaming, thinking big. One of the facts they threw out was the top 1% successful people are dreamers. The 99% look back in the past and they pick their friends, they pick their relationships, their networks through people that are always thinking ahead, right? So when they get together, it's not about, oh, remember this, remember when we did that? It's more focused on, I'm excited to do this and I'm working on this and here's my goals and here's what I'm going after. So took that home and thought about it a lot and between that and just self self talk right like when we talk to ourselves thoughts in our head we gotta cut it out we gotta cut it all out we gotta think positive we gotta think we're all great people we're here for a purpose we have a reason and uh we all may be trying to find that still but uh remember you're special you're someone that everyone looks up to and uh we need to remind ourselves that we're gonna mind everyone around us too they are special in our lives and we appreciate them. So trying to add a little value, a little context, things I've learned, things I'm working on. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure where this is all going, but trying to uh, do a little bit of everything, I guess. Uh, little hike, little outdoors, little deep thinking, little self-improvement, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see where this all goes, but I hope you get some value in that. Hope you're having a great Memorial Day weekend and uh, catch on further on this trail. I think we're about a little over halfway, maybe a little further. Um, but yeah, I just got a sandwich and uh, refueled a little bit. My hair is soaked from sweat and water from the cliff. So it feels good though. So we'll, uh, got a moth flying around me right now. I will uh, catch you guys soon. I'm tired. Um, <clears throat> there's a turn off to the one trail, which I think was the way I normally would go. And uh, this all trails took me a wider way. <clears throat> Further down Nature of the Trail. Nature of the... And uh, I could tell it's not travel much because there's a ton of cobwebs, spider webs, a ton of bugs, a ton of flies just tacking everywhere. Not fun. <clears throat> Kind of miserable honestly and then once they start to let up then you have climbing because you saw the sign earlier you drop into the valley it's kind of where most of well a lot of your drop down is technical a lot of your climb up is technical and you go a little bit through the valley there and uh whew, this will put you in shape quick um but yeah just trying to get up this hill now it's a lot of climbing some awkward steps because i'm tired it's obvious <clears throat> hitting that point but <coughs> taking a break trying to get away from these bugs a little bit i think they slow down a tiny bit and uh keep trucking here i think i got two three ish miles so a little bit left uh hoping there's something seen it because so far it's been not worth the extension uh we'll see it's, it's new it's nice exploring new areas just hopefully it has some payoff here so uh, keep going. Just gotta get some water, a little bite, and then uh, keep trucking uphill. So, yeah. Ooh, I think I found one of the payoffs. <clears throat> Just so you guys, you guys go through a trail and you're on a weekday or on a trail just not many people travel, grab a stick like this with a bunch of little branches and uh, just swing it up like this in front of you. Works really well as a uh, way to get those spider webs. <clears throat> out of your face hopefully ah, so just make sure I watch where I'm going here 
but it looks like we got another waterfall. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry for moving all around and fighting bugs while I'm filming here. Um, but yeah, another beautiful waterfall. A lot of water running along these trails, which is pretty cool. A lot of little runoffs, like little areas you can sneak off to to see waterfalls and running water and all that stuff. And uh, nice little break spots, get away a little bit, slow down. Whew. Yeah, bugs are nasty, guys. Bugs are nasty. One thing I miss is not being in Arizona. Very little bugs. So, Whew. oh man, this is very next gear needs a kicking. <laughs> oh my god, uh, I haven't hiked nearly as much, at least not technical stuff, this year yet. And, uh, man, this trail is like eye opener. I mean, I think even if you're in good shape, it's gonna put a challenge on you. But whew, this is where you test your ability to keep taking one more step and just keep climbing because no one's coming to get you. Well, I guess someone would if you call, if you can get a cell phone. <laughs> service but this is what pushes you man this is what gets you that next level of conditioning it just shows you like you can do things that are hard you know for me right now this is hard thankfully my leg that had ACL surgery on it a few years ago is uh, handling it better than last time which is good. It means all the work, strengthening and stuff I've been doing and agility work and stuff over the years has helped a lot. Whew, cardio though, man. Cardio. Woo! Uh, um, yeah, I'm trying to film it. It's kind of giving me an excuse to get a breath. <laughs> a little bit of break here. But uh, get outside. Push yourselves. Like... <clears throat> Man, between work and TV and all that stuff, like so much screen time, right? So much screen time. And uh, we're like naturally getting out of shape because of that. It's had a fly attack me. But, uh, but yeah, we got to get outside. And this fly's kicking my butt telling me to get going. So we're going to keep moving. Here we go. So if you take the way I took, right near the end, probably the last mile or so, when you're tired, <laughs> uh, this is the crossing you gotta do, so just be aware. This is uh, a couple, obviously, trees down across the path to take, or I guess you could hop some rocks over here and then kind of jump on the rock or a tree real quick and then back off on the rocks, but <clears throat> a little tricky. A lot of uh, puddles and stuff to step through, so almost there. Another three quarters of a mile, I think, but almost there. <laughs> 